Well, hello again, guardians, and thank you for coming for today's guardian training. This is a recording to kind of go over the last, and I have 17 videos actually. Of, I'll show you why in a second, but I've created all of these guardian training videos and this project as a way to kind of channel out the inner teacher in me, kind of get her to flex her muscles and operate and also to challenge myself to do something once a month on a specific date, which I had struggled with in the past as well. So I didn't pursue teaching when I tried the first time institutionally after I got a psychology degree, I went into back into university to try for another two years to get an education degree and just pile it all in together and approach, I would say, you know, our next generation with that childlike, boisterous, and also fiercely defensive energy that I am and that I am with my friends and my family and my fierceness and my creativeness was something I noticed I was not being witnessed for in the traditional senses of the educational system and the educational educating system, basically like the professional university system and so on. And although I would stand out and I would speak out in class and I would be, you know, a light and speak and flex my voice and my presence in adulthood, early adulthood with my peers, I would notice that my, my information or my enthusiasm would also fall flat onto a lot of people. And it was a part of my awakening as well, where I felt I was walking amongst ghosts or amongst the demented or amongst zombies. And there is a Dysinian glass glasses that people were wearing and seeing these sort of things. They were seeing the lack of aura around a person's body and so on. And there's a, a bunch of different ways that we can kind of bend and see more of the electromagnetic spectrum and so on. And I knew about all of this and began to expand into awareness that yes, there is a problem. There is a lack of life. There is anti-life and there is this heartlessness and these people around me are in this institution who are going to become the next generation of healers, psychologists, and educators, you know, preschool, kindergartner, you know, all of the grades, teaching all of the children, teaching these kids. And at a young age, I didn't feel like I was going to be having my own children. So I felt very much a almost kindred to children in a way that I was always going to be on their side and I was always going to be serving them in a way wherever they were. And without that, without that personal desire to experience fractaling off into making another person, it was more like, while the people are here, the people who are here, I want to look after them and just kind of have a more broad stance. And I pursued going outside the box in my research and my spiritual expansion by going to conferences and meeting people who had skills, who had written books about the skills that they had that I knew were not being taught in university, but I was seeing real evidence of, as I had been taught how to do and look for evidence and scientific process. There's a lot of very intelligent people also having mystical and wonderful experiences and teaching about a variety of things that were not discussed in my education. And I read so many books and for the most part, it was a lot of repeating information and a lot of names whom I assume were just titles in a way and heads of departments and names that weren't real, but there was too much information to stuff into our minds to really get into the humanity of what I was even learning for the most part. And I realized it was because I wasn't amongst, you know, living, breathing, thriving 
curious, hungry humanity. I was amongst drones of people. And if I had had those glasses when I was that age, I probably would have saw very few auras. I felt like I was walking alone amongst a swarm of people. I felt like the only fish that was alive in a, you know, a whole school of fish that were supposedly living, but not really giving me much of any sort of feedback like ever. And it was very bizarre. <laughs> and as I again branched out, because my parents and my family were still having some sort of intellectual conversation and feedback with me. I was still getting laughter from friends and peers outside of school. So I knew not everyone was gone. I worked in the service industry and I met and talked to a lot of really quick-witted people, but uh, they couldn't stand living or breathing or acting in that corporate or that official structure or the matrix where you have to be hired and then work your way up and be in sort of a position in a larger structure. Because these structures felt heartless and they were also very vampiric and they pulled a lot of the energy from our friends and family. And we saw that. And as a service industry worker, you're getting paid cash. And if you're responsible with that, you may be able to avoid the vampiric system a little bit because of that one little potential. But I'm not trying to encourage you to go into the service industry. I'm encouraging you to see my path as an example of why I'm here doing guardian trainings now. And the people I've met and the education I've received from expanding outside of the institutional side, outside of even Google searches and so on about stuff, outside of watching YouTube videos like this one, I physically went to locations and physically got in the aura of people that I was inspired by and wanted to absorb their intelligence, their true knowledge, their their aura, their mannerisms, even the way they stood, the confidence that they had gained from this knowledge they have pro procured with their experience. <laughs> and I wanted to give that knowledge back and was trying to figure out how to do so. And so I started this channel. I decided to begin a, a main thesis about space weather. And then I was going to figure out how I was going to start teaching all these other subjects. And I had resistance and with my lack of experience being on camera, talking out loud, teaching in front of people, because I dropped out <laughs> of, of the educational training portion of my institutional education, I dropped out and didn't get those experiences because I couldn't bear it. I just couldn't empathically like bounce off of people. It was, it was like a dead space. It was eerie, I would say. And obviously it was meant to push me away and make me seek answers from outside of where I had previously been hanging out as a way to grow. So what you can see behind me is another thing that naturally happened and wanted to add itself to today's episode. And as well as this fly that's like persistently interacting with me and I'm just going to let it because I there's no effort to go. It's just going to be a part of this training and like that's what it is. That's what I'm also here to teach. It's just like compassion for what the other beings, the living, breathing beings are doing around us. Like as long as they're alive and have an aura, it's fine. And this fly seems pretty lively. He seems chill. <laughs> but the things that you won't be able to teach in a classroom is like compassion for a fly that's bugging you while you're teaching a lesson. Like there was so, they were coming down on young teachers so much that it would be like, you were going to be supervised when teaching. You're going to have all of these objectives that were very weirdly abstract. You're going to have to be all by yourself tackling these abstract lesson plans and it, and the timing and the, the pay, it was just all very bizarre. And painful and they were lying to people. They were telling people things that didn't even make sense with my psych degree. I had just finished confusing things they were talking about with the psychology of people. And so I realized that like finding teachers is very tricky and going out in the world, I have realized the same thing. Finding tricker teachers is really tricky. Teachers are very flawed individuals, just like so many other people who take themselves seriously enough 
to project ideas into a room of people. <laughs> you have to have a certain level of audacity. And I, I had it building and bubbling inside of me. I would get visions of speaking to auditoriums of children about their brain development because that was what I was going into was psychology, brain development, teaching. I was trying to make it easier to survive that transition when your brain develops in a world where the adults are having a hard time even uh, empathizing with the lack of brain capacity that this young looking adult has. Like they're not an adult yet, but they look almost like one, but you're imposing way more on them than their brains can handle and their nervous systems can handle, and you're ripping out their wisdom teeth, and you're, you know, you're putting cavities in, and you're uh, incur encouraging like high impact sports that are causing a lot of brain and nerve damage to young ages, lots of car car cartilage damage and bone damage, and you know, you're traumatizing them with extreme media, and testing all of this like psychotic stuff on that population all the time, the students, the children. And I'm watching it. I'm in it. I'm witnessing it. And I didn't know how to help. And I just wanted to. So I just did my best to pursue it. I watched a bunch of people talk. I've watched a bunch of people do YouTube channels. I've watched a lot of people make money doing like cap encapsulating a bunch of uh, training videos and then selling them as a group. And I figured I might do that with this package one day is sell it as a group, as a, an offering on my website, a actual something you can purchase from me because I've just been so fast with it. It's like knowledge and the relevancy of it is just flying out of my mouth and even organizing it into once a month guardian trainings for years was very hard for me to even fathom because so much information was flooding around my mind about what needed to be brought into the world. And I was intimidated by my peers as well because they did such a good job. And I also didn't want them to think that I was trying to get in on their, on their groove, you know, <laughs> and I'll just be honest with you. I just, I've always just been my own little unique creature and they have characters like that in lots of different stories. One that is relatable lately has been Luna Lovegood from the Harry Potter series. And she also wears a pair of glasses like this where she's been able to see through the veils. And one, the one time that I may have been able to get that initiation, I rejected it in university was when they tried to make me watch They Live for a film studies class. And I didn't watch it. <laughs> and I still have it to this day, but I know what they discuss in that film. I actually had to do a particular assignment of just one scene of that film for my film studies class. So I didn't have to watch the whole thing. I just had to observe this one scene. And so I only saw a blip and a little bit of a sample of the film. But this understanding that, again, that there is like this zombie world around us and that we are, there is also an attempt to zombify the world and steal the joy and the soul essence of children just by zombifying them on purpose and giving them neural damage and so on early into their years. I mean, we've had to have the conversations about even the children's bodies and protecting them. Like teachers are fighting to protect the children's bodies from their parents in certain senses in the last few years as well. And like, it's been a battleground in the school system because it is the major system that's moving children around and dictating their lives. And I'm glad that the online learning has become a relevant thing. And I, I'm glad that I can make these videos openly and speak openly pretty much to you and your children potentially are watching this and just give you my honest, genuine opinion without a principal or without somebody paying my salary, observing me, just people who are donating to my Patreon are the ones who have shown that support and they're never telling me to stop. They're never telling me to shush. They're always asking me to continue sharing and they like my particular brand and dance of teaching and discussing certain topics. So this particular video was going to be about the expansion of astrology 
but there was so much tumultuous energy when I was tapping into it, trying to be like, okay, I need to teach this. What am I going to study? I basically got the message that instead of doing that, I would encourage you to pursue a deeper study of astrology. If you're interested in the last video about astrology that I did do in this series, I discussed more of the tropical Western astrology and the timing and the mechanisms. I also discussed how I noticed it may be a little bit off in timing wise, but then there's a whole other conversation, you guys. And I needed to just tell you as an educator and just follow that, finish that thought for you is that there is sidereal astrology and there's also like Ayurvedic Vedic astrology. Those are other systems. They're basically the same of telling the time and telling our place. They are very similar in timing. I would say it's not crazy out of the box different, but it is different and it's off a little bit. And there is a little bit more to it. It's a more complex thing to learn. So it is a challenge in a way to pick it up, but in, there's knowledge in all of these systems and these bodies. And if you're passionate about studying something, I want you to continue. And if you've been having issues with your teeth or your nerves in your neck, in your head, I want you to look at that deeper. And I think astrologically, <laughs> the bones is, I'm pretty sure is Capricorn energy, but to be able to speak is a part of the lungs. This is a part of Gemini. And, you know, I forget even if there is, there is one for the voice, but there is astrology, biology, like those two things are also combined. And then there's the meridian science of every single one of your teeth and those nerves is connected directly to organs in your body. So if you're having an issue with the tooth, you can literally look it up, find the issue and figure out what organ needs love. And then you can fix your diet and adjust your diet. And in a few weeks, you'll probably notice the pain probably won't come back. And if you just keep that in your balance of things, if that tooth ever gives you an issue again, you'll know exactly what your body's asking you for. And you've just got a biofeedback and a communication that just works for you and your body, you know, we all have it and we've all been doing it. And that's how we survive. And I'm not trying to simplify you or your experience, but as a teacher and a person pursuing, wanting to be an educator, I just wanted to be sure that I'm tying in this astrology too, in a way to what this theme has kind of evolved into for this December, which is this nervous system solidarity and this nervous system focus. And before this video, I was talking and meditating like, okay, I've been feeling like I don't know what to do in 2024 for the guardians and how to proceed. In this video, I was going to quickly cover all of the 17 guardian training videos that I've done. So we're going to very quickly, I'm not going to go long into each of those 17 things. I'm going to do that very shortly. But for the year 2024, I was told basically that I need to meditate on it and I need to go through a transformation in a way, which is not a bad thing at all. This didn't feel bad. It felt like I needed to do some personal time, which I'm going to be having. We're all going to be hopefully having a little bit through the solstice and into January, kind of preparing and moving into Capricorn season, which is always getting stuff done again. That's the bones. So keep your bones healthy, focus on your bones, keep them strong. And strong bones means you're doing calisthenics and you're pushing against stuff. I want you doing push-ups. I want you doing pull-ups. I want you doing like moving rocks around. Like I want you keeping your bones nice and dense. Even like the, some of the, I want to say monks, but that might not be real, but like even just like literally banging on your bones all the time, making sure they're hard and that they are dense and just reminding your body, you're here, you're alive, you're wanting this flesh, you're strong because the solar cycle is going to be intense 2024, the year of the dragon. Like there's so many things that I need to consider and in this meditation and so on for the next few weeks, I'm excited to see what's going to come through because I'm just going to let it, you know, go into my feminine, which is great for the winter solstice is just go into your feminine, go into that level of deep re rejuvenation and reception while we're in those the darkest days of the year, like we're in them right now and just receive 
receive. Like there's so much light even to receive, even on this side of the planet right now from all these solar flares and stuff going on. Like there's a lot happening. There's a lot of light still. And I want to receive the inspiration. And as a teacher, it's nice that I have this free form to be able to choose what I want to experiment teaching next. And it's only for my own improvement as well. Like at the end of the day, I'm improving as a teacher. I'm improving my confidence speaking in front of a group of people. It's, uh, it definitely has some room to grow, <laughs> which is fine, but I'm excited to maybe one day be strong enough and confident enough to stand in front of an auditorium of young people and be like, Hey, your brains matter to me and us smart adjusted adults. And we want to show you our best advice on how to make those brains work for you the best and learn from our mistakes if you can. And uh, also be resistant to certain things that are trying to damage you because there are those temptations out there. And I think they are nefarious, some of them. So there's nefarious temptations coming in all directions. It feels like for 2024, because there's so much light and change coming as well. So you get the mix of the both. It's like oil and water, but we're really like mixing it together in 2024, I believe with all of this solar maximum radiation. And in this meditation and in this time of reception about what we're going to do in 2024, how am I going to level up? How am I going to bring something even better to my audience just as a challenge for myself? And the only thing that's come through so far is instead of doing a topic and me lecturing on a topic in 2024, which was fun, but I am interested in changing it up. I'm going to do a movie study and a film study basically, because I have to watch some of these films like the one I missed, They Live. <clears throat> and actually watch these films and uh, take it into my nervous system that has been well tenderized over the last few decades. And I wouldn't encourage these films that we're going to watch to children in a way, but as a parent, there is still like distilled lessons and some wherewithal that you can maybe retell the story in your own words, reteach the story without all the flashy gun shooting, blah, 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 whatever's going to be in there. Cause I get I'm so tired of watching movies and watching people shoot guns because it's just been so bad lately it's just like in every movie but you don't need to even cover that part probably in most of the narration of the true lessons from the films we're going to watch together and this i'm assuming we'll just review the films and to have a little more fun in 2024 because we're going to be busy working and you know guardians can still train through <laughs> through film study, I think. And a film study year sounds like a lot of fun to me as well. So in the meditation and all the receiving, maybe I will receive all of the films we're going to study. Perhaps we can study more than one every month, for example, to kind of give those who have the time something, you know, some significant, not literature, but I would say art and like substantial art to consume and mull over and reflect against, you know, as we continue our guardian training and becoming better people and being of service to others and being wise and, and protecting the innocent and so on. So let's try sharing the screen to where we're going next here. Okay. <laughs> this was supposed to be the background and I couldn't find the picture. I mean, when I tried to upload this video and start this, the picture that's behind me was the one that wanted to be chosen. So, mm -hmm. but still honorable mention to these like nice Rocky mountains, this beautiful, large cabin retreat home and the Aurora Borealis and these big evergreen trees, as well as the snow and the clear skies and the winter air energy of this December. And I want to be honest with you, 
there's a lot of this coming through guardians, like the snow in general, the crystalline form of water, um, the clarity of our atmosphere, the Aurora, even the evergreens, you know, and the Rocky mountains, honestly, like all of them have been really strongly coming through for me the last few months, especially, but just as the medicine for people, as a medicine for our society. And so if you haven't been up to visit them and you haven't been around the big granite mountains, the Rockies, I would invite you to go. Have you haven't been around the big evergreen trees, I'd invite you to go find them somewhere and be amongst them. The older, the better. And for some reason, I was told that these, the granite mountains also are slightly rich in uranium and they're slightly radioactive. Like, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I'm just giving you this feedback and I'm sorry, it's not good teacher mode. Usually I, a teacher should look that up before they're repeating it, but it felt right to say. And as a good student, I would hope that you would look it up. <laughs> good guardian, be responsible with the knowledge you're gaining every day and double checking it, getting multiple opinions, not being a dictator about it. <laughs> but uh, these mountains and this medicine is something I think we need to engage as well in 2024. So there's nothing wrong with watching movies with your Starlink in your RV as you're traveling around because it does work very well. And I would recommend trying it. It is like a feeling of being spoiled. Your inner child is just so happy. It's a really wonderful feeling. I'll be honest. And you'll be like, Oh, you, some of you outdoorsy people might feel guilty, but honestly, it's just, it is a vibe and it's really fun. And it's like a, a treasure of the modern times. And it's just a brief moment in history. We'll be doing things this way as well. So always, in my opinion, enjoy what you can. Enjoy the beauty that you see around you and the unique creative beauty that kind of pops up in the in-between, in the unexpected places. And uh, the Aurora has been a big theme and the, I would say the initiation and the prolonging of my work and a friend of mine who's been recently engaging the Aurora, been in, in and amongst it as it's going off really heavily this past year near in the North, mentioned again how alive it was and how much true spirit and consciousness is in there. And I hate to be a goof or like a nerd, but I also was shown an, uh, in the Pokemon universe a character that is the embodiment of the Aurora in a way. His name or their name is Rayquaza or however you say it. It's like a green serpentine dragon, which is kind of like green serpentine Aurora Borealis. And it's like a guardian of the planet and make sure that, you know, and it's dominating, like it doesn't like things in its space. And it was a very interesting storyline and personality that gave this spirit. And it makes sense to me, like it was relatable that the spirit is alive and I feel like the spirit of the Aurora is inspiring us more than I we realize. And again, I think it's a guardian of our planet and shout out to all of the like original primordial guardians of our realm. And I've just been enjoying being with you and interacting with you and going over these topics. And I feel like together we're creating a stronger society. At least I feel like I'm putting effort in to attempt to do so. And that feels nice. And those of you who re relate to that and feel deeply about guardianship and the earth, earth and earth council and earth guardians, I hope that you found these entertaining. And here is the rest of them on my YouTube channel, Ascension Diaries in a playlist, which is common for people with YouTube channels to make. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but if you go to someone's YouTube page, there's usually an area of their playlists. This is the guardian training playlist. And so we went over topics, the topics, power, dreams, cleanse. And then at the beginning of this year, January, so we did three and then we began 2023. So first we dealt with power and power, dealing with your own power, dealing with other people's power. Then we dealt with dreams again, your own dreams, other people's dreams, cleansing your own body for the sake of everybody again, basically. Then this year we started with 
tackling the sacral chakra basically and the sacral and root chakra and the solar plexus, I would say too, on the heart, like really your whole physical body in the sexual energies workshop, which was, you know, I had a lot of really wonderful feedback from that. I feel like sexual energy is something that is super underappreciated in our society and in the deeply intellectual parts of society as well. Like it's a intellectual energy in my opinion and it's not given that respect in the west all the time i think there's areas in the east that have kind of held on to that but again i don't think it's been very many but i don't have as much experience educating in the east and talking to other educators or people practicing or teaching about this particular subject but the sexual misery of our society is something that another friend of mine who also has done workshops and taught a lot of people, she was super inspired to heal and work with and talk out the sexual misery of society. And all those years, I would say, being her friend and being in her field and seeing her point, I mean, it was so inspiring to see another woman who cared so much about the topic that to me in my deep core identified with and was some of the first things I ever reached out and taught people as a young woman. I was confident enough to speak and heal others about was their sexual energy. And I know that may seem bizarre, but I, my mom educated me young about things in an intellectual conversational way. And then about the emotional experience of it all and how it's safe and how it's not safe and what's safe and what are safe and non-safe interactions and feelings and emotions and where to get help and how to find resources for information when you're getting, you know, learning something new or engaging something new and how to get your boundaries right and so on. So the sexual energies workshop is kind of a, a culmination of that energy that I would say I want to reinstill into the guardians, which is in a way fiercely protecting people's sexual energy and their right to it. And they're the beauty of that in general. And I'm not, yeah, because I feel like a lot of spiritual teachers who do go down the wrong path get stuck in a weird, distorted area and start harvesting sexual energy from people and they don't even realize. And um, yeah, I was just hoping that I could say something this time around that could convince people that, you know, there's good in that realm and there's, you know, safe, chill people who want that area of a society to be healthy and cared about and nurtured. So I'm glad that other people resonated with it. And that, that was a big, big part of what I thought was important for guardians, because I feel like it's, it's the, so like the deep, 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 truth of like what humans are is a sexually reproducing being. So to kind of start there was just that primordial moment, you know, I would say for guardian training. And then we began moving up in a way and moving more into protection because not only just your sexual energy, but overall your protection and a broader scope of that. Then we talked about luck as a way of generating the the good feedback loop of the universe in a way. We talked about abundance after in April. Again, similar thing. And in, in a way, I want to expand on the terms. Like there's so much generic bull crap about these topics and that I've read online. Like I've read it all. I was on Instagram making inspirational posts before there was the hashtags, inspirational posts. Like it was right at the beginning of that where before people were just taking pictures of their food, literally, like they weren't even thinking about producing something for humanity to look at and uplift their vibration, to open their mind spiritually, to plant those seeds of a better existence, a better mindset. And that was fresh and new just in 2014. And I began that journey. I was terrified. And it's just because where's the abundance of not focusing on yourself, like, and constantly giving others, like, are you a nun? Like, 
what are you doing? You're giving your life away in a way. And it's like, it's just giving love and giving inspiration, I thought was the way to go. And I still do it. I, it's the only way for me. And that's where I found satisfaction in the May workshop. We talk about satisfaction and the feeling of that. And if you're not attaining it, how to kind of grab it again. Then we talked about rhythm, which was also during one of the more absurdly insane anomalies I've seen in my space weather work. Again, so it happened the same day. The rhythm of the research I was doing got so crazy that it made everybody learned about it. It was the hugest news. And the resource that we got that information from, they got all uppity and were kicking people out and blocking people and changing web pages. They changed everything after this day. They changed their whole website after this day. So it was a huge day where we did the rhythm workshop. So I would recommend that one for sure. If you haven't yet, um, I did a space weather case study as one of the months to just educate again, why I do space weather, because the last month was so insane. The rhythm workshop, I was like, okay, we have to do a quick stint. Like I got to tell the guardians again, why do we care about space weather? Because I was just so excited about that connection that happened the month before. And then we began going into astrology and that this is the first time where I've got any pushback. And I want to encourage you guys who are starting astrology, not to be afraid of the pushback with astrology because it's there. But once you know, it's going to be there, it's just a part of the video game that you're like, Oh, okay. I've heard about you and that level already. I can literally skip it you know, and I don't have to listen to your opinion. I can go with what resonates with me because we create our reality <laughs> and we all interpreted it, interpret it differently. And so you may need to look at things at this particular way and with this particular system for it to make sense to you and your learning and your brain and the timing and the time space continuum you're existing in. It's just a I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. I find the beauty in that. And it's, it was a great conversation. And if you do want to know astrology basics, I would recommend watching it and seeing where I would point you first to kind of get a, a start on astrology and studying it yourself. We went into sulfagio frequencies over in October. Um, this was right after I did a, or no, right before I was about to go on my, on like a month long road trip that I got to do up the coast of California, just because we were just testing to see if our used RV was going to break down or not. Like we just pushed it and we ended up out for much longer than we expected. The universe does that. And it was wonderful, but right. I did the sulfagio frequency clearing and realignment before I did that trip. And I assume it was to help align me so we could manifest a new campsite every day, new campsite where we wanted to go an opening and opening and opening. It was just, we were in the flow and the best we could. And the sulfagio frequencies to me, I feel like have brought me into the flow, which is why I shared it with people. Again, astrology and the sulfagio frequencies have a bit of a controversial energy to them. And I could be super naive to some things about these things that I'm not aware of yet, but so far, and I'm amongst other scholars, you know, I'm not just all by myself with blinders on. I loved to learn from my peers because they're so smart. I love surrounding myself with the people I've gone out and met at these conferences and loved their energy and their perspective and their bravery is a big one for me. And I'm like, yes, brave people with smart, smart ideas. I love you. Stay near me. I want to hear your perspectives. Most of them have also enjoyed these topics to a certain extent that I share in the guardian trainings and have also had a lot of really good debate about the use of these frequencies and the use of these mediums like astrology or tarot exact. I had, I have I didn't even do tarot and any of these guardian trainings yet, but I could, if that's so called, but it didn't call, but these systems, like I say, in all these videos too, like just use, this is how I found use in them. And you can see clearly in the videos, how I'm using it, what I used it for and get my perspective. You can tell that I got a good experience out of it and I didn't find anything in all my years wandering, wandering around the internet amongst all of the spiritual pages basically that are populating. Like I've been following it since pretty much it started online and following and following and then unfollowing and 
unfollowing some as well. Just having seen almost no negativity about certain things gave me the confidence to at least share them with you. And then you use your discernment. I did a, I added a couple things in here that weren't my classes. So after that sulfasio frequency thing, I did a podcast, which I absolutely loved. Like for me, I get self-conscious about going on podcasts and talking about myself and about my journey and about what I do even is embarrassing to me sometimes because I'm nervous that what I do is silly. And I have those moments. Like I really hope that what I'm doing isn't just me not understanding something and looking stupid, <laughs> trying to figure out something for years. But you know, I just am literally just risking looking stupid and trying my best to pursue answers. But in this pursuit, I've learned a lot. And my friends and peers who have podcasts want to know more about what I'm doing because they've actually seen my work make sense in their own practice and their own work and their own lives. And they're curious about what I know. And so I did this Burnt Witches podcast with my friend, Abby Lynn, who another talented woman, you definitely have to go to her channel and follow her podcast and these great conversations, especially women. And she brings in the historical factor about some sort of con condemned person who had been a healer or a witch or whatever in the village. And there's some sort of a record of them being, you know, abused for a scapegoat, I would assume for the most part to try and, you know, fall into line like we're experiencing a, a potential mirroring effect or a resemblance of in our modern times with the censorship and so on that all of my friends who have been working their honest hearts off are experiencing on social media. Like I've not watched any of my truly brave, honest hearted people really rise to what I know they're capable of holding and hoisting and, and offering and influencing our next generation. It's like, I would love to see my friends with these podcasts influencing more of our future generations with their ideas and at least their thought techniques, at least, and the way that they speak about stuff and the way that they feel about stuff and the way they feel into things. It's intelligence beyond what they talk about on like the news or on these political debates and people who are posturing is in the know. So this podcast was fantastic. I was very proud of it. It just felt so good. It flowed really good. I loved it. Then we did the Feng Shui guardian training and I don't have formal training in Feng Shui. I was approached by someone who does. I did their reading and in return, they did a reading for me in my home. I learned some things from them. I got an activation from them, be honest with you. When I engage with people, some mirror neurons or some DNA in me will also activate because it recognizes like, recognizes like, and it goes, oh, and it wakes up. A mutual instrument starts to play or mirror in my system that wasn't playing before, but was always ready to go. And Feng Shui was one of those things. And I have this memory and this reoccurring memory of knowing it and knowing how to do it. But I met this woman naturally. She came to me for help. I exchanged help for her. She helped me with my home. She taught me some things from some very high level, very fancy feng shui teachings, like for real. And I wanted to share that with people, that energy in a way, reciprocate that energy this month because the home and our personal temples were really essential for getting ready for the new year, basically, and preparing for 2024. So Feng Shui was the big one the last month. And then I did this Harry Potter series review, which we're going to continue doing into this month to discuss, again, a film. We're doing a film study. So it's like, that's kind of the momentum, even though I think there's more for 2024 that I'm yet to know. So I've told you that already. But the movie review is really important and doing this kind of review on these popular, popular films that are deeply embedded with symbology and, and disclosure and stuff that doesn't always bubble up to the surface even all the way. And discussing it with peers is just so healing. And it pulls out truths and knowledge that I just couldn't find myself, but was so grateful to see. And so with the collaboration of my friends, Alexia and Jenny, 
we are going to be doing the Harry Potter series into the next few weeks. Um, and I'd encourage you to watch what we've done so far. Because again, this is a way to also protect ourselves from the naivety of just being a fictional movie or book reader or consumer or watcher, but we are really guardians and we are slicing through, like our eyes are like daggers and lasers slicing through the veils and the, the smoke in the mirrors and getting right to the core of what all of these media these big media releases, what is the core of what they're really hoping to impression upon the populace and like being able to cut through and find it is a skill and is something I want to hone and doing work with Alexia and Jenny has already like amped up and kind of activated again and mirrored that truth within me and that skill within me and it's activating and I'm excited and also collaborating in general, I think, is a bigger key for 2024. So I'd encourage you, if you want to start interviewing people on your channel, if you want to start a podcast interviewing people, it could be a really good time. Just the more you can, more perspectives you can gain and share. Because you can't. if people aren't traveling, they might as well hear a diverse amount of perspectives on their platform or whatever. So I'm just encouraging you to do your best. Make your own guardian training videos this next year. If you want, I don't care. Like the, do it, like do it. Just make your own collection of videos that you think the world needs and you'll feel so good. You'll feel accomplished. Your soul will rest easier. You'll feel like you're showing up for yourself and like your true expression in this life. It feels like and that's wonderful. Uh, speaking of true expression, I just wanted to show you this, this homie right here. Wanted to be in the video today. This is a crystal that I picked up. I think it's soda light. It's like a dark blue. And he's carved into like a little elven alien face. But that being wanted to be in the video today and just throw it in there. So I didn't even know how to shoot that in there in the proper way. But again, these collaborations in 2024 are going to be interesting. And I think by this time next year, we may have experienced some more miraculous things beyond the veil and maybe have had more contact with homies like this in our reality and have a different conversation about it. So I think Guardian Training wants to progress and it wants to also level the playing field even more because being a teacher and speaking at you is not exactly something that is giving me fulfillment. It's more about wanting to, I honestly love to listen. I love to hear other people's perspectives. So trying to equal out the playing field, doing more interviews, doing more group work is something I'm going to be doing more this next year in order to keep rallying the good vibes and showing sisterhood and brotherhood, um, love, respect is what I think the guardians would be served most by and honored most by and dignified most by in 2024. So I have been thrilled again to be able to do this and it's an honor to be supported by people who I've actually not met in person, but who trust me enough to pursue and do these guardian trainings without having an idea about what the next theme is going to be. So it's been nice to have that creative freedom. And I just hope that when you make your own projects, you give yourself those freedoms if you can, because it just allows so much more wonderful stuff to come through and the process of preparing a lesson, even a lesson plan for the day or the, the speech is just such a self-growth process too. And you learn new things last second and you inspire people you never expected. It's a wonderful thing. So these things, these, thank you so much again for giving me the feedback, like about what meant a lot to you and what really impacted you and your family that I may have said, because wow, like it's truly like the biggest gift the fact that I could make any sort of positive impression or be of any support is just my dream. It's my honor and my intention 
So I'm going to get emotional, but it just means a lot to me that I got to be me. I got to help my way and that it got good feedback. I didn't get a, like, I didn't get much negative feedback. I got a lot of like, I may be disinterest from my audience, which is okay with me too, because I do a lot of random stuff <laughs> and I get that that's not really normal, but this experimental space of my channel has offered me so much. And I just hope to be a good example too. like, just go out and do it, try it, speak about it. I, I spoke and offered data and information even more at the end with more slideshows and stuff to try and get more visuals and offer you even more with these downloads I was having and wanting to dictate out. And so just providing even more value and more engagement, more reference to my own ideas was such a gift and becoming having them more robust with your comments and feedback was just so rewarding. So yeah, being a teacher is fantastic. Doing guardian trainings and workshops for people, so much fun. Would recommend, you know, speaking at conferences and doing workshops with people in person is something that my heart I know wants to do, but I've just been so nervous because I've not been the, hey, look at me kind of person. I I would only speak up in class when no one was saying anything and I was just bursting like with awkwardness for everybody. So I would just finally say something and, you know, I wouldn't take any roles of like speaking or addressing the group and except for like being a cheer, a cheer captain, like once. And that was the only time I felt like I was in a position that was, I had that sort of authority to dictate over a group of people because they had elected me that position and most of them were younger than me and most of them really needed the guidance. Like they really were curious. They really asked me questions. So to have adults and people of all ages engage me, ask me questions and want to know what I think about stuff is just such an honor. And I'm glad that I've been able to put myself in a position in our community to like get to be a conversationalist and discuss stuff and level with people. So as a guardian out there, I would recommend that you continue pursuing opportunities to discuss and talk to people and listen to them and allow in a way God or the universe. And tomorrow we're going to discuss the plasma as well with the next Harry Potter uh, Sega that we're going to be discussing just this over this other, this field of good vibes, just letting it be in a newer, freer way. It's been great. So thank you again for letting me be your teacher, for letting me be your trainer keeping you on the leading edge of your finest fitness when it comes to being a guardian. At least I'm doing my efforts to nudge you in that direction. And I will see you guys on my next videos and my next offerings. Thank you again for joining my Patreon. If you haven't joined yet and you've watched this whole video, please consider joining at least the free version. <laughs> But there is the budget option and then the guardian training full amount to just hop aboard and just try this out and commit to it and do the training with me because I'm committed and I'm committed to making it interesting and entertaining and useful. So I hope that helps you know where I'm at and let me know where you're at. I'd love to hear your feedback after this particular wrap up of 2023 guardian training video. Take good care of your teeth, your nerves. If you need help repairing them, look it up. Please do the research. Allow the algorithm to know that's what you want to learn so it can feed that information to you. Use those algorithms for your benefit. And if anyone can get me some Dicenian, Dicenian glasses, um, that would be fantastic. So goals for 2024. Also, maybe some like red and green night vision, but I don't know if I can handle seeing the stuff in the red night vision, but we'll talk about that later. Look that up if you want, but 
<laughs> Let's just focus on the Dysonian glass for now, okay? And uh, if you want to jump along, finish up watching the second, third, sorry, first, second, third, and fourth of the series of the Harry Potter films or read the Lissati books, books, read the books, catch up with us, and then join me on those videos I'm going to be shooting in the next couple of weeks. Join the conversation, join the fun. And in the meantime, I'll do the space weather updates and my diary updates. So lots of content coming as usual. I just want to give you all my gratitude guardians. You've been my inspiration and I love you guys. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.